today's PV Magazine webinar. I'm Michel Fuß, head of PV Magazine's editorial department. Larger is not always better, but the experts we are discussing with today want to convince us that at least concerning modules for certain applications, larger modules help to increase return on investment or what is equivalent, help decreasing the levelized cost of electricity for a solar plant. Saying this, it is obvious that the power or size of a module by far is not the only parameter which has impact on the profitability. And it took me a while to learn that larger modules today are a bit used as a synonym for modern module technology. You always buy the full package, so not only larger modules, but also at least it depends on the manufacturer maybe, but at least if it, you buy also advanced technology. And we will hear about the full package today from our first speaker and he will introduce us in the main module parameters and innovations which lead to his argument that a new and larger and more powerful modules will increase return on investment. I welcome Carl Lee. He is EMEA Sales Director at Seraphim Energy. Seraphim is a well-known module manufacturer and our webinar partner today. Hi Carl, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Thank you everybody for joining the, this webinar. Ah, great. From where are you joining us today? I'm joining from the China and from the Nanjing city, and uh, it is springtime now in China, so it is the time for the the very good harmony and for the good mood. So hope today everybody can get uh, more information about Seraphim and also about our product, and uh, can benefit everybody who join in the, this webinar. Great. Um, Kyle will not only talk about the module part, but at the end of his presentation, he will present also a comprehensive cost comparison including POS costs for smaller and larger modules. And I'm look at, looking forward for the discussion to the discussion. A good return on investment is only achievable if you also optimize the electrical part. Therefore, Carl has brought with him Charles Wang. He is sales director, SMA Greater China. And he will explain us what to consider for the connection of the larger, more powerful modules. Hi, Charles. Good morning and good afternoon. Will. Uh, with everyone. Uh, my name is Charles. I'm coming from um, SMA. Today I'll be sharing uh, a lot of uh, new information from the inverter side. So looking forward yeah. to it. Great to have you here. Before we come to the presentations, we are interested in your, the participants' experiences and intentions as we have a large group of professionals across the whole Europe and also from other regions of the world attending this webinar. I have prepared two polls. It's my impression that the experience with larger modules varies very much with the country and the region. And therefore, we want to ask you about your experience with larger modules, which means more power and larger scale. So have you a lot of experience? Have you some experience or have you none, no experience so far? Carl, um, I'm quite sure that the, it depends a lot about the region how much the people are already used to larger modules. Is that correct? Yes. Actually, you know, for the larger V model, it has been uh, introduced to the market from the second half of last year. So I do believe there are already some you know, developer EPC company already chose to go with the larger V model. So it means for larger V model, it has been in the market definitely. We hope that our you know the participants can provide more information if they have experience. Well, now we cannot hear you any more, Carl. I don't know what happened. The... Can you hear me now? Hmm. Okay. Um, yes, now you are back. Okay. Now you are yes, back. Okay. I'm um, sorry. I think we can also close. We can... Yeah, no problem. I mean, we are all depending a bit on the on the internet, so <laughs> nobody is well. quite well. So I think we can close the survey and show have a look on the results so we see that seven percent of the of the attendees have already a lot experience with larger scale and more powerful modules mm -hmm. at least already 50 almost 50 percent have some experience and 44 mm -hmm. um, percent of the attendees have no experience so far but i'm quite sure as they are attending this webinar that they are interested in the topic so uh, 
jumping right into the topic. Um, we have already received quite a few questions at the registration, but please, whenever you, the participants, have new questions or comments, or if you feel that some information is missing to follow the arguments of the experts, please send me a message through the question window, which you can see on your control panel on your screen. It helps me leading the discussion and making the webinar a good experience for everybody. I will give these questions and comments into the discussions, either on the slides, if they fit on the slide, on the topic of the slide, and if they receive them in time, or after the presentations, if these questions would interrupt the flow too much. Now, Carl, it's your turn. Yes. Now we have to switch to your presentation. Thank you, yeah, Michael. I see, that it's, I see that it's there, so you can start. Yeah, I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. Um, okay, good day, everybody. And uh, this is Carl here from the Theraphim Solar, and it's our great honor to have this chance to make the presentation about the Theraphim company and also about the large wave model that we are producing and to introduce it to the market. And Michael just said at the very beginning, so. Uh, now we can see more and more the modules making from the larger wave modules. So what we call that is small changes, but it is a big accomplishments. I think the market chose to go the big wave model. Definitely, we have the reason. The one reason that is very clear that is we want to reduce cost and we want to get the better levelized cost of energy. So today my topic it will be in the. three parts. Uh, I'm sorry, my slide, it cannot, okay. So my, my, my presentation, it will be in the three parts. The first one, it is about the Seraphim Solar. And uh, sorry, wait for a moment. It will be the three parts. The first one is about the uh, Seraphim company, and the second about it is about uh, the lower level as cost of energy and the high efficiency model demanding from the market. And the third part, it will be the Seraphim S4 series modules making from the half cell module. S4 series and this module making from the 182 millimeter cells. So then we come to the First part, it is about the seraphim solar. Seraphim is a company was established in 2011. We have this year we are going to have our 10 years anniversary, and uh, totally now we have about 5.5 gigawatt production capacity in globally. And also, we have been on the tier one list from the Bloomberg and New Energy Finance in continuous six years. And also, we have received a three times top of firmware from the PV Evolution Labs. And uh, in, until now, until last year, we have shipped more than 11 gigawatt modules to more than 40 destination countries. And we have more than 50 plus global financial partners and more than 100 R&D technicians and also technical partners. And in order to provide our customer with the better pre-sale and after-sale service, Seraphim set up the different office globally and also the manufacturing locations. As you can see, our sales office in different areas, like the US we have in California, and we also in South uh, America, that is in Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, and also Chile. In Europe, we have an office in Spain and Italy, and in area we have in the Singapore, and also we have the office in Victoria, Australia. And the total Seraphim has five different manufacturing locations. There are three in China, while there are two abroad, one it is in Vietnam and the other one is South Africa. Because we do believe that the African market has a very huge potential, it is promising market in next two years. That is why we set up the factory in South Africa, not only in the modules, but also the cell factory in South Africa. 
And the second part will be our today's topic, that is how to see the global change on the lower level as cost of energy and also the demanding for the high efficiency modules. As we always say, uh, solar industry it is so easily impacted by the local government policy, making it so fragile compared with the thermal and the hydroelectricity. So to achieve the greater parity becomes a very key target for everyone involved in this business. So in order to reduce the level less cost of energy, the whole industry took the different innovations especially for the wafer size high efficiency modules. In these two years, there are a trend that we can see that is to utilize the bigger and bigger wafer like from the 158 to 166 to 180 and uh, 210. So thanks to these innovations this year, we have welcomed the 500 watt plus modules in the market. And from the left chart, we can see the global PV project bidding price dropped considerably between the 2030 and the 2070, and has continually its downward trend. Let us take the UAE as example. In the 2014, the bidding price of the per kilowatt hour was 4.97 US dollar, but in 2016, only after two years, the number dropped to 2.42, more than 50% reduction. Then we come to the 2020, we see another 50% decrease on the number that is 1.35. And from the right chart, it indicated the comparison between the solar and the wind energy on the level cost of energy development curve. Compared with the wind energy, the solar's level as cost and number shows a very glyphic curve. It is a giant drop between the 20, uh, 2009 and uh, 2016. Then we move to the next page. So what will be the forecast on the global level large energy cost of energy trend? The ongoing reductions in equipment cost, improving efficiency, declining financing and the development cost are expected to further lower the global benchmark number on the levelized cost of energy. So the left chart, it is about utility scale PV levelized cost of energy forecast among five countries. They are the Japan, Germany, China, India, and the US. And from 2020, we are going to see a very smooth curve. And from the rest, the right chart, as we all know, in order to reduce the level as cost of energy, and we see more and more big wafer modules. So as we can see, and uh, from the 2012 to the 2019, we can see the very high and higher module efficiency in different years, but the difference is number is getting bigger and bigger, then it means we get higher and higher uh, model efficiency modules. Carl, we have a question from one of our participants is asking whether these SEOE calculations um, contain or include also financing costs. Do you know this? I mean, we have seen that it's from BNEF, but do you know whether they include also financing costs? Financing costs for, 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 for which? For the, for the plant. So, um, um, I mean, if you calculate an LCOE, you have to make assumptions of, about your cost of capital. And the question is whether this is included. That is one. Yes, actually, as I already know, the different market, different area has a different cost on the capital. So we, we talk about the how to reduce the level as energy cost of energy. So it means we also put into, into the consideration on the capital cost. And in our last page, when we do the comparison between among the different modules, we also will put it into the consideration. Okay, thank you. Um, just to, to apologize, I think there will be some delay from my side on the page. So now... Now we have switched to the next page. Now we see the roadmap of the self-series modules. 
Yes, this is a roadmap of the Seraphim as serious module in 2021. As we just talked above, it is about a higher module efficiency from the S4 series. We can see from Seraphim side for the S1 series, that is 156 module, uh, the efficiency only about 19.4. But if we come to the S3 series, that is module making from the 166, the efficiency that we can get that is 20.7. And we come to the 182 modules, it means for the S4 series from Seraphim, the efficiency of the module, it has been up to the 21.3%. So it means uh, as the withdrawal is, is getting higher, it's getting bigger and bigger, we also see the improvement on the module efficiency. And we move to the next page. This will be our third part. It is about Seraphim's S4 series half cell module. That is the module making from the 182 modules. Here are the general information about the Seraphim S4 monofacial modules. And uh, this module output, it is between 535 to 545. Actually, by the end of this, we are going to see the output up to the 550. And the weight, it is 26.5 kg. And uh, besides the monofacial modules, we also have the Warren that is from the bifacial modules. As everybody knows that the bifacial module is getting more and more market share. And there will be about like the 10 to 30% additional power output from the rear side. So the bifacial modules, now we can see a lot more and more demanding, especially like from the uh, Middle East and the African market and also from India market. So because uh, the isolation areas mainly from these areas are sand, and we can get a better output from the rear side. So that is why in these areas, the bifacial modules is getting more and more attention. Carl, also here we have a question. Does that okay. mean that is 535 to 545 watts is the just the um power of the front side so i don't use any bifacial effect this comes additionally uh the 535 like 545 then it's only the output from the front side not including from the back side okay great thank you and in my next page then is the page 12 here we can see some numbers, you know, for the different environmental locations we can get, the benefit that we can get from the rear side. We can see this page is the bottom part. So for the first installation environment, if we go with the asphalt ground and the surface reflectance, it is about 10%. And the power generation gain we can get from the rear side that is about 7%. And if we shift to the grass, we get a better surface reflectance. So it is about 30%. And meanwhile, we can get the power generation from the rear side about 10%. So if we move to the snow, because we can get another higher surface reflectance, then it is up to 45%. Then we can get about 15% power generation gain. So it means to go with bifacial modules, it depends on your installation environments. If you get a higher, a better surface reflectance, then we can get a bad output from the rear side. And uh, for zero S4 series modules, half cell module, we have a rear side gain between the 10% to 30% in different environments. So ideally, this module can reach a maximum output power of about 700 watts from both sides combined. For example, for the 530 watt module, compressive power and electrical parameters are just as below. For example, and uh, if the, the power gain from the rear side then is 10%, so the total maximum power we can get from the front and the back side then is about 583. But if the power gain we can get, it is reached to 30%. 
So the total output that we can get from the both sides, it will reach about 689. So for this S4 theory, definitely in the way we provide our customer with high reliability and also the leading warranty, uh, we are offering like the class A fire resistance and uh, 5,400 5, Pascal and uh, 2,400 Pascal from the front and the back side on mechanical loading. And also we are offering extended product warranty that is five years longer than the regular industry mainstream. So it means we are offering the 15 years product warranty and uh, 25 years for the monofacial module and 30 years for the bifacial module. Carl, we have some questions for warranties. Um, okay. One is concerning the bifacial module. So what is the declared guarantee for the rear side additional power? Is there some guarantee? Uh, actually, you know, for the rear side performance, we, we, we don't provide uh, don't provide a guarantee because it's very simple. When we are selling the bifacial modules, we don't make any charge for the rear side because That's it. Yeah. Yeah. because I just mentioned from my previous pages and the rear side what you can get mainly depending on the installation environments. So it means because of this aspect. And uh, this factor, so it means we cannot provide the guarantee like what you can get from the rear side. Mm -hmm. um, but does that also mean we have also the question on profitability of bifacial? And I mean, then the yes. question is, would you sell would you sell the bifacial modules for more or less the same than the monofacial module, or would it be more expensive? Uh, it's a bit of more expensive, as everybody know, because for the bifacial model, it is making from the two glasses. And from second half of last year, everybody experienced a very dramatic increase on the glass cost. So this means for the bifacial models, we are providing a bit of higher cost on the bifacial. And also we can give the reference number like 70% on bifacial ability of the more bifacial models. Okay, um, you have another question concerning the guarantee, be brought, be concerning the product warranty, because you say it's 15 years. What is included in the product warranty? There's sometimes some confusion in the market. I see that also in other webinars which we have. Um, I mean, there's the performance warranty, which is easy to understand because it covers the 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 the, 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 the output power when you flash the model. Mm -hmm. But the product warranty, does it, for example, cover if there are PID effects which are not so severe that the performance warranty limit is reached? Or does it cover leaked? Or what, what does it cover? Uh, actually, for your question, you know, for the product warranty, it mainly includes the true pass. The first one is the product workmanship. And second one then is on the materials. And uh, the fact you just mentioned, like the uh, PID, something like that, that is shall be included in our performance guarantee. That is 25 years for monofacial and 30 years for the bifacial. So it means any question happening from the PID, uh, it shall be covered under the performance guarantee, not the product workmanship of the material warranty. Hmm. Okay. Let's move forward because I, we, I, there are still some questions, but we will do them at the end because now we want to really to understand the effect of the larger modules, uh, larger wafers, and we have we should come to this point. Then. Okay, I get it. And uh, this page and the page fifteen, we can see you know we talk about uh, the okay circuits producing the S four series modules, and this page it means we are already we are, we, we are fully preparation for all the certificates that needed from the IEC and the UL and the certificates that is including like the PID, salt mist, ammonia, chlorine, sand and dust, LID, LETID and all the pan files. So it means this model has been ready and uh, to receive the book orders from our customers. And this page, it is much more clear for all the certificates that we already done and for different areas. For example, for the Netherlands, we have the CRG, 
and for California, we have the CEC, and for Canada, we have the CSA, and for Brazil, we have the Metro, and for the UK, we have MCS. So it means before the CRFM introduced as for CRF to the market, we have make all the certificates ready for different areas. So now we can talk about like the main advantages or maybe the features for the S4 series of modules. Actually, you know, there are two main features from the production or from design part on Serafin S4 series modules. One is the multi bus bar and the second one that is the round ribbon. Uh, for example, if we go with the regular file bus bar, the resistance loss of the current both on cross flow and also on the string connection will be too high. So to go with the multi bus bar and also with the round ribbon, we have three advantages. The first one is to shorten the route that current to reach the ribbon, about 50% reduced compared to go with the file bus bar. And the second one, multi bus bar has more wide channels on current collections to improve the module reliability and also on the anti micro crank. And uh, the third one from the point of the optics, because the using of the round ribbon, the optic utilization around the ribbon covered area can reach about 75% from the area angle. So compare with the 5% to go with the regular ribbon. So it means not only the high output can be achieved, but also the actual power generation capacity of the single watch. And uh, another feature from Serofin S4 series and his mini master cell gamp. Uh, from this, we can get one very simple information. The cell gamp from S4 series and it's only about 0.4 millimeter. And the regular one then it shall be about two millimeters. So that is a very high reduction. From this design, we can get three advantages. The first one then is to reduce to increase the light receiving area. And the second one, to reduce the dimension of the module to get higher module efficiency. And the third one then is to reduce the cost on other materials, like to on the back sheet, on the EVA, and also on the frame. So it means our design on Seraphim S4 series, our main consideration, it will be how to reduce the cost and to get a better LCOE for our customers. And this pair just show us a very excellent performance from S4 series and uh, continue to respond well and to lower irradiation with outstanding performance in the low temperature environment. So it result in a higher power generation for example, from the left chart, as we can see, in the different low irradiation environment, S4 series module compared with 156, 158, and also 166. Uh, S4 series module that is making from the 182, it gets a higher performance. And also the same result and the different temperatures from the right chart like under the 85, under the 55, under 30, under 20 degrees. As we can see that S4 series modules, the performance always it is the best but compared with the other dimension of the wafer. And uh, these the test data that we get in our own test labs. So it means S4 by facial and monofacial performance and low and low irradiations. These are information just for everybody in the reference. So we, we, we do a lot of testing our test lamps to, 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 to get the collect, get the information, especially on the performance of the S4 series modules. So from this information, this page, we can see you know, for the SRF and S4 series modules and uh, all the other parts 
also ready, like the inverter, trunk transportation, installation feasibilities. So it means for S4 series modules by 82, it can be used, widely used now in the market. And the next page, it is the analysis, and it's on the BOS. So we check example from the China in Qinghai province, and uh, this project, it is about 100 megawatt G-mounted plant, and uh, it is 3.13 megawatt centralized in water and the fixed mounting systems. We can see we just use 158 millimeter half cell modules that is with output of 410 as the reference and uh, the, the, the right that is 166 module with output of the 450 and uh, the other one that is from Seraphim S4 theory that is 540 watts. And we can see from this chart, uh, we can see from the mounting system Compare with the 158 modules, we can see about 14.5% uh, reduction on the mounting system cost. And uh, on the land, it is about 7%. And uh, for the Lambo, it is about 7.5%. So the total BOS cost reduction, it is about 5.8%. So the total levelized cost of energy that we, the reduction that we can get then is about 4%. So it means to go with the S4 series definitely can help the developers and the EPC companies to get a better LCOE number. I think that is all my presentation from the Seraphim okay. site. Carl, thank you very, very much. I think we have to go back to the last slide because that is really a comprehensive overview and we have a lot of questions concerning this. Um, okay. Let's start with the land, is, land because you say with the Seraphim S4 you save land costs, which basically means that you can install the same power on smaller land, on, on a smaller area. Um, yes. The efficiency increment, as we have seen, was, I think, less than seven. It was a quite significant one, but it was less than 7%. So it's not only the efficiency of the module, I would say, or the people ask, but it's probably, is can you pack it? Can you pack also the modules more closer? Or how do you come to the 7%? No, for example, OK. And if you want to set up a project about like 10 megawatt, 100 megawatt, right? But if we are using the higher output model, it means the number that is required and it means it gets less. The number it is, it is getting less. So it means that we can save the cost, save the land area that is needed. Hmm. How about the, then we have a lot of participants who are wondering or asking about the, uh, the the installation so basically the mounting system labor cost part so let's make it a simple question can you point out a bit about the installation the labor which is needed to install a larger size module compared to a smaller size module can you handle it similarly do you need more people and how does it come that you can save labor costs Oh, I, 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 can, I can just explain in a very simple way, because the, 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 the module number required for the same capacity of the project, then it's getting less, right? It's getting less. And the first one thing that is installation time that needed for to complete the whole project, then it's getting, also getting reduced, right? So mm -hmm. if, if, we, if we think from this way, so it means we can get a lower labor cost on installations. Yeah. What is, for example, the weight of the Seraphim S4 module compared to the to the small module, the 158 millimeter module? Half cell module. 158 millimeter modules. Yeah. What is the weight of it? How 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 heavy is it? Heavy. The weight. And yeah. uh, for the S4, that is about, I just mentioned. Let's wait for a moment. 
it, it's getting a bit of the a bit of from the weight side it is a bit of higher but for the very specific number maybe after meeting i will check for this one okay but you can still carry it and of course that is for sure because at the very beginning we just see some customers they already used the module of the 182 yeah so for installation definitely there will be no problem yeah then we have the question i mean you are now you have now switched to the 188 millimeter cell module um we know that also other there are also other companies who are even going further so for example to 200 10 millimeter wafers um will you also go to this route to increase the wafer size even more or do you think that you have reached an optimum and uh, from seraphim side i i can't say that to make the comparison between the 182 and the 210 because we are also offering the module that is making from the 210 and uh, i think i can talk something about uh, because we can see another change from for the market that is the big dimension module like the above the 600 watt something like that so sometimes you know my customer will ask me so how, how to make the choice between the 182 or 5 or 12 to 10 modules and also to go with like the big dimension modules more than 600 watt modules i actually you know like to i can say to use the 182 module uh, there will be about, uh, for example, 20% reduction on the cable loss. And uh, this means it can improve about uh, uh, 0.15% on the IRR in 20 years. And also, on the other hand, compared with the big dimension modules, the working temperature will be about uh, 6 degrees lower. So it means about 2% more generation uh, on powers. And also, you know, uh, the BOS cost in the whole project, it is about, in the module structure cost in the BOS cost, it is about the, the, the 19%. So it means that the module structure cost will have a very big impact on the BOS cost. And for the mainstream that we can get from the market on the tranking structures, it is about the 100 meters on the lens so it means if we go to the big dimension modules like more than 600 watt or even higher so it might be a challenge on the on the money structure side on the cost side so what i can say now 182 modules and uh, definitely in these two years it shall be the mainstream on the market yeah. so maybe also this will develop further so now the the, the mounting systems are maybe develop further to the 188 millimeter wafer size modules and the weight and then in a, in a, in a few yeah, years the, then we can the talk about larger sizes yes the money structures not fully ready for the 182 and for the 210 but if to go with like the another step like the very big dimension modules maybe we need more time yeah. um last quick question on this slide um because we have to move on um have you taken into account that the larger model also your master load model now even if it's not 20, 210 uh, but 188 that this model needs more steel for structures given the same wind load i'm sorry i didn't catch you have you taken into account that the larger module needs more steel for structures giving the same wind load uh from this side we already did the test so so it means from this side there will be no any risk involved okay now we have to move on because we are very interested on the, the electrical side there are still questions open we will do this in a q a session after this second presentation so please stay tuned in and we will go through all the questions which I haven't asked so far at the end. And we are now coming to the second part because um, what we have already seen on one of the slides of Carl is that the electrical characteristics change. change. For example, the ratio of power to open circuit voltage, well, the ratio power to open circuit voltage and power to current as far as I understand. Charles, is that true? And that's why you now come into the game and you can tell us how one does the electrical design for such 
installations. Yes, Michael, thanks for your introduction. Wow, that's a very interesting um, presentation. I learned definitely a lot about the uh, large scale uh, solar panels. And I hope um, by the end of this presentation, you have a, uh, the same, <laughs> same amount of questions that um, you have. Uh, and please, if you have anything that uh, you want to like, ask, just um, post it online so that we could um, answer you uh, uh, shortly. Okay, so uh, let's jump right through it. Um, I hope I have to control. Yes, I do. Okay, so here's the agenda of the uh, next about 20, 25 minutes. Uh, first, we are uh, introducing the SMA, some milestones we achieved so far. And um, we'll just go straight into the technical aspects of what Mikhail and Carl just um, managed, uh, explained about bifacial panels and also the large scale uh, we'll be looking at obviously from the electrical, from the inverter side, what needs to be checked. And uh, we, we also go through some specification so that you can understand um, from the inverter side, what needs to be uh, double checked. And lastly, obviously we have, we'll, we'll go through a little bit on uh, the products that uh, solutions that SMA um, provide. Let's get right into it. Okay, so uh, believe it or not, <laughs> this is actually the, happens to be the 40th year uh, of SMA. So we started back in 1981. Uh, as you can see, we developed the first uh, photovoltaic inverter back in 1987. That's, um, yeah, that's over 30 years old. And that's actually, or oh, then we started with the, the first transformerless stream inverter, 1999. Uh, all the way to nowadays, when people say the, uh, the tri-power, the Three-phase inverter. It started uh, um, from um, 2011, and uh, the stream, the central inverter that we had, uh, like the, the 40, excuse me, 40, the uh, four megawatt scale of central inverter. That's uh, so 40 years. That's quite a lot of achievements, and hopefully. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, that there are not many enterprise. Experience. So yeah, we are still the number one European uh, PV manufacturer. Uh, sold more than one billion euro last year. Forty fourteen point four gigawatt sold. After now it's hundred gigawatt installed. Charles, we have some audio problems at the moment. I, I the, 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 your, your, your voice is getting louder and, and, and less loud. I don't know whether you changed the distance to your mic and therefore we see the regulation of your mic or whether it's an internet issue. Okay. Uh, I think that's maybe because of the mic that um, is, I hope this sounds better. Yeah, at the moment, yes. Just continue, yeah, okay. I will give you a note. Yeah, please let me know when you have a, a audio problem. Um, yeah, continue. Um, this 100 gigawatt installed in SMA inverter worldwide uh, across 190 countries. Uh, currently, we have 3,300 employees around the world, and 18 countries have subsidiaries. Okay. Now, this is the background of our inverters, uh, of our company, sorry, and we should go straight into. Um, Bifacial panels on the inverter side. What does that mean? And what so, Charles, again, you are getting. It's hard to to hear you anymore at the moment. You have to mm. change something with, with your mic. Okay. Let me see if I. Charles, are you still there? Yeah, I'm using my computer's. Uh... Can you hear me now? Does that sound better? Yes. Yeah. At the moment, when you ask the questions, you sounded better, but just before you were you were cut again. So yes, just just try it again. I will tell you. Okay. Please. Yes. So now I'm using my um, computer microphone. I hope this um, will be more stable. 
Uh, okay. So about the bifacial solar panel, um, as Carlos previously, previously said, uh, it all depends on where you installed and w which servers that you installed that can have an additional gain uh, on the back, from the back side. Uh, it's either a transparent sheet or I have a double glass panel uh, where we make the reflection possible. So as you can see, um, different service type has different additional gain. Uh, we will have an example of this uh, at a later stage. The Obviously, the best one is a newly accumulated snow. Um, that's probably at the um, higher altitude. And also uh, some only some part of the country near the, uh, near the North or South Pole, yeah. And one thing, other thing I can normally we uh, face on an application is nowadays the uh, panels are always installed uh, above the water. So that could be about four to 7% uh, additional gain on that. Okay, so this bifacial solar panels from inverters point of view, that means the DC to AC sizing ratio. Okay, so which means that uh, when we have a 100 kilowatt inverter on the AC side, it doesn't mean needs to be mean we can only install 100 kilowatt on the DC. Uh, normally, it, it means we should add more on the DC side. As you can see from this study here, it's back in 2016 uh, in Brazil that they did a comparison of different loading ratio from 80% up all the way up to 1.170%. Uh, so that's, you can see at 100%, that's the gray bell curve here, that this inverter is actually a 10 kilowatt inverter, um, but it, I never reached 10 kilowatt during the daytime. It only goes beyond 120 to 130%, then there's a clipping, which basically means in order to achieve the optimal uh, generation, LCOE, the PV inverter should always be able to um, design at high DC over AC ratio. So that means that it should always be at least 110% all the way to 130%. Uh, we have an example here. So if we use a 500 watt panel installed on grass, which is about seven to 10% gain, as we um, mentioned previously. If there is a 100 kilowatt PV system with a bifacial gain that requires uh, 200 uh, panels, okay? Charles, now, if, now it was stable, but now I cannot hear you anymore. Oh, I'm just uh, sorry. I just tried to minimize my background noise. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard uh, the ambulance was. I <laughs> know, oh, no, but no problem with okay. ambulance. Yes. Okay, <laughs> my bad. Anyway, so uh, same with the 100 kilowatt panel without bifacial gains, uh, because it doesn't have that uh, additional gain anymore, which means that you will need additional panels to reach uh, the similar. Uh, DC wattage. So in this case, you need extra 14 to 20 panels required uh, if you want to achieve the same DC power in comparison. Okay. Uh, so that what that means from the inverter side. So from the inverter side, that basically we will need to check on one parameter specifically. That is the maximum a, a PV array power. Uh, and normally all the inverter manufacturer, they will put this information right at the DC section. That basically tells you what is the maximum DC power allowed uh, to install for this inverter model. So in, in our case, uh, 100 kilowatt inverter, we can put maximum of 150 kilowatt. So that's 150%. So we basically ensure that it can cover the maximum gain 
from the bifacial panels, wherever you install, uh, depends on the location we previously mentioned, can go all the way to additional gain of 30%. Charles, I have a question here. Um, yeah. How a question on the DC AC ratio? Um, it concerns this slide and maybe also the slide which you had before. Um, sh should the, if you do a cost optimization and determine the most cost efficient DC to AC, AC, AC ratio, should it be different for a bifacial installation compared to a monofacial installation? Yes, um, from, for the uh, bifacial installation, yes, obviously that the um, that needs to be taken into account. That's for sure. And um, and like Carl previously said and mentioned in the uh, when the when the cost involved on the bifacial panels, that maybe that's a little bit more expensive, but uh, depends on the gain that you got. Um, that needs to be calculated calculator thoroughly uh, in comparison with the normal type. So sure. that means for a bifacial installation, the DC to AC ratio normally would be a bit higher than for a monofacial installation that is impacted by the module cost at the end. Yeah, basically, yes, because from the previous slide, we said if you want to install with the non bifacial panels uh, with the same DC power, then you need to have additional a uh, number of panels installed, uh, which means that is also additional cost involved. Mm. Yeah, okay, and that thank you. probably will be much higher than the when you select on the bifacial yeah. panels. Okay, thank you. Because now oh, we oh. have we, we move on because now we are coming to the larger panels as far as I have seen. Yeah, before we get to into that, I would like to share with you one of our very special reference. That reference is in Antarctica. It's not in any countries. Uh, it's installed at the Princess Elizabeth uh, Research Station. And um, that is, uh, we have the bifacial modules. And it, as you can see, the it's very tilted uh, about nearly about a nice, well, let's say 75 degrees uh, because it's in Antarctica. Uh, it has our storage as well uh, that uh, we, during the daytime, we store the solar energy, and also you can see the wind farm here, um, so that at nighttime they can use up the ba the battery power to supply the local loads that for the research station. So this is a very special one. Um, they have the wind, they have the PV, and they have everything. Okay. So now the second, uh, the third topic that I would like to go through is the large scale panels and in this case we'll use 182 millimeter solar panel compatibility. Um, what does that again, what does that mean from an inverter's point of view? What we need to be checked is three very important um, parameters that you will see on the in uh, so, uh, solar panel data sheet. That is the maximum power, uh, the maximum power of the voltage, and also the current, the uh, MPPT current. So all these three has a great aspect, uh, a great influence from to from the inverter side because there will be some limitation to some of the inverter uh, manufacturer their model because some of their models may not be able to adapt 100% for these uh, large scale solar panels. We'll get in, into that very shortly. So for inverters with one MPPT, uh, in this case, such as our 150 kilowatt screen inverter, or the central type of inverter, which also only has one MPPT because it's for the uh, large scale um, PV plant, that can easily manage um, because we, we always use a DC combiner boxes, which means that all the strings is combined together well, the current will be added together. So as long as the current is within the inverter um, maximum current limitation, that's fine. So whenever your the inverter has only one MVT, that basically generally has no issues with these large scale solar panels. 
Charles, a question to this because yeah. we already had the point that the open circuit voltage is different for the larger panels. So does that mean that these inverters which have only one MPP normally are less sensitive to the open circuit, uh, maximum open circuit voltage? Yeah, when, when the, uh, op oh, that depends on the voltage, the maximum DC voltage on the inverter. But yes, with large scale uh, panels, they tend to have higher open circuit voltage, which means that the number of each string, number of panel you use on each strings will be less compared oh, okay. to normal, uh, uh, normal uh, conventional uh, yeah. solar panels, yes. But you can add more strings and therefore with the combiner boxes and therefore it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's correct, precisely. Okay, Thank you. okay. so yep. uh, what it gets more tricky is that when the inverter has multiple MPPT. So in this case, the example that I use is um, our core two inverter, which has 12 MPPTs. You'll find something similar on the market that probably says nine MPPTs or maybe six or anything like that. That is actually becoming trickier with a, a large, scale, large scale panels, whether it's 182 or 210, doesn't matter because it all depends on the current. So uh, for our, our inverter, the maximum current for each MPPT, that is 26 amps, which means that if you want to connect two strings in parallel, that's no problem with the conventional one. So this is the, on the left-hand side is a conventional one because that's only 10 amps for each string. So you put combined together, that's lower than 26 amps, no problem. And that should be no problem with most of the other manufacturers as well. However, when it goes to 182 PV module, you'll find out that each of the stream, the current become 18 amps. And in that case, you can only connect to one stream per MPPT. Uh, for our inverter, because luckily we have 12 MPPTs, that's no problem also. We don't need to parallel of one MPPT, but instead we can just connect all 12. That will give us above 110. But for other embedded manufacturers, uh, they, if they only have nine or six MPPTs, they, it's, hot, it's highly unlikely that they will reach the DC power of 110 kilowatt in this case. So uh, on the conclusion wise, it basically means that um, with the, when you select the large scale panel on the inverter, you will need to double check if it's a multiple MPPT. Uh, that needs to be designed um, very, very carefully to, to ensure that it's a, um, to keep this design optimal. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Charles, because yep. I mean, when, when we had our preparatory call last week, um, I understood it in a way that there's a sort of a rule of a thumb, which means that when you have larger size modules and larger size panels, you would first reduce the number of modules per string in order that not to exceed the maximum voltage with the open circuit voltage of the string. And then in yep. the second step, you would reduce the number of the strings or adapt the number of the strings in order to match the maximum current of the inverter input. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So basically it means that uh, when you use a large scale panels, um, you have some restrictions uh, when you select some uh, inverters that the D first you had to check the DC voltage, uh, like you said, the open circuit voltage still has to be within the limit of each string. Secondly, you will need to check uh, the current on the um, on the each MPPT side that cannot exceed when you have uh, multiple strings want to connect one MPPT. So yeah, more restriction that's for sure. But um, luckily for our uh, models, that you know, compatible with no issue. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, we have now reached the 60 minutes, which were scheduled for the webinar, more or less in two minutes. Um, nevertheless. I, we now listen to Charles because he shows us a bit more about the, the the inverter side. And I will not interrupt anymore, but after Charles' talk, I will go through all the questions. And those of us 
who have to go away because they have another meeting, you will all get a link with the recording. So you will be able to jump to 60 minutes and then we will get the rest of the webinar and you can also will also be able to find the answers to the questions which you have chatted in the question window. Charles, go on. Yeah, sure. Uh, don't worry, it only, only lasts about uh, two minutes. So just uh, a little bit of introduction of our uh, product portfolio that we provide not just the inverter, obviously, uh, we provide the string and um, central inverters. We also provide energy monitoring and also we have uh, some energy management because now we have the battery uh, energy storage come into play in the part. And in future, we also in Europe, at least, uh, we actually we also have the um, the EV charges that allows us to have the in integrate to the entire energy market. So that's very exciting. Uh, we have the large scale um, project solutions, uh, such as for one one inverter that's maximum 4.6 megawatts. Uh, we, we can put two inverters together, three megawatt inverters together. Uh, we have the 40 foot container that has a transformer, medium voltage transformer. Uh, it's a true turnkey container solution. We also have the power plant manager that can control and monitor the entire plant uh, up to yeah, 100 megawatt uh, power plant. We also provide warranty support, uh, extension warranty, and also engineering service. Uh, for the um, commercial, this is the last page, by the way, commercial uh, project sizing, we all uh, can three-phase inverters from 15 kilowatt to 50, and now we have two new inverters in our family. One is the uh, MPPT, 12 MPPT Core 2 inverter I, I previously just mentioned. The other one is a single MPPT, 150 kilowatt, uh, 1,500 volts inverter that come into the family as well. So we have all the uh, products uh, available for all uh, on different application, whether from this commercial or all the way up to the um, the industrial uh, PV plant. And that is it from my side. And I hope you enjoyed. It. Please raise any questions um, uh, if you have any. And I think we'll get bit go through a little bit over time today um, just to have a, a sound discussion. Thank you very much. Charles, thank you very much. That was Charles Wang of SMA. Um, we will now go through the questions. As I said before, if you have to run away to the next meeting, you will receive a link with the recording and you can jump to the 60 minutes and then you will get the answers to the question. Now I start, start start from the bottom with the link, with the questions. So we, do, we are doing the inverter questions first. Um, Charles, when would you recommend, you have now single and multi MPP and Inverters. Um, when would you recommend single, when multi MPP inverters, and what is the cost comparison for, let's for example, use unshaded utility scale solar plants? Would you then go with single MPP T inverters? Absolutely. If it's a large scale uh, with no shading at all, there's basically no point of using multiple MPP T because there's no shading, it's not necessary, it's all uh tilted to the same angle towards the same direction um absolutely i don't from my point of view i always recommend to go to the one mppd only um there's a lot of reason behind it and one of that i can share is because with more mppds you always have more components needs to be installed inverter and as you know with more components uh you increase the possible failure rate in future so uh, unless it's a shaded and also a commercial where you have uh, many obstacles and the, the, when the scale is not that large, I would recommend to go through the uh, only the single MPPT uh, inverters. Yeah. What is the a DC to AC oversizing ratio for the central inverters? Is it also 150%? Uh, 150% is the maximum that's allowed. Uh, but for the central, actually, I think it's more than that. It's actually two, up to 200%. Uh, percent. But the problem is, that the larger it goes, um, you spend more on the uh, solar panels to, to install. So again, that needs to be calculated uh, very carefully, uh, especially with large scale um, systems. Then one of our attendees asks, are there any benchmarks for the AC, DC to AC, AC ratio commonly used in the latest utility scale projects? 
Sorry, do you mean that the AC power? No, the, the, no, the DC to AC ratio for the, which is at the moment for the latest utility scale projects, which is commonly, commonly used. So do you yeah. have any experience about this? Sure. Uh, normally we recommend to use 110 to 120%. Uh, in, in some areas where, as uh, like we previously said, in uh, um, where we have high longitude, um, that that's the that there may be some cases where we can go to 130 percent. Um, but in general, I think uh, it's 110 to 120 percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we are now I start with the first model question, but there still can be also some inverter question. Maybe if we Charles and Carl, if you can comment each other, feel free to do that. Um, now we have here a question um, whether the perspective. I mean, we talked about 182 millimeter wafers. We talked about 210 millimeter wafers. Is that a prospect that is going even larger? And which is the timeline? Let's say in five years, would we then have 217, 230, or whatever? Carl, can you comment on this? Do you have any idea? And uh, from my point of view, and uh, for the larger wafer model, in the next uh, two or three years, I think the mainstream from market will still be the 182 and uh, 210 millimeters modules and the wafers. And uh, maybe I know some manufacturers and uh, is working on the maybe a different size, a bit of a larger wafer modules. But I think for such kind of the product, uh, it uh, will be put into the market in bulk maybe after three years, it will become the mainstream. Then we have, of course, the people are asking for the costs and the prices. Um, what is the <clears throat> price per watt now and next year? I mean, I know that companies sometimes don't want to public in public discuss prices, so maybe you can do it in a more general way. And uh, for the cost i think in next two or three years the module price uh, will become a bit of stable so it means in next one or two years maybe it will be hard to see the very dramatic drop on the module prices but of course for the very specific numbers that we have to discuss the case by case but uh, from our side we think the module price it will become stable uh, the reason is very simple because we get more and more high demanding from the market. For example, from the China part, in next four to five years, the annual, the every year installation capacity, it will be about 60 to 80 gigawatts just from the China part. So it means with the high demanding from the market, it will be of hard to see the very big or giant drop on the module prices. Mm. Um, we have several times the questions concerning tracker. We have uh, until now we have discussed only the fixed mount panels, which for let's say for Central Europe is probably the dominant way to to install utility-sized plants. But in, when you go south, of course, trackers become more and more important. So, what about larger size wafer modules and more powerful modules on wafers? Do you have experience with this, and how is the cost comparison there? So you mean, do you mean the cost between the large wafer module compared with the regular, like the 158 or 166, the price difference, cost difference? No, I mean, you have shown on your last slide of your talk that the compa cost comparison of mm -hmm. uh, larger and smaller size uh, wafer mm -hmm. modules for a fixed mount installation in China. Do we have a similar thing also for tracker ins installations using single, track single access trackers? I think the comparison and uh, it will be the uh, nearly the similar to go with okay. the go with the tracking. Yeah. Okay. Then we have the question concerning your case study, where you draw the numbers from for this uh, for for your last slide, this hundred megawatt case study in China. Um, can you share this case study so that? The, uh, so that the people can also compare the financial models co which are inside, which are included in this case study? Yes, I, I think maybe after meeting if someone requests for this for details, I think we can share for this from so our maybe, side. 
to those of you of the participants who are interested to this, um, maybe write directly to uh, to Carl. You can find, I think, your yeah, you can you can find the email on his presentation. You just see it there. Um, yes. Then um, let's go further with the questions. Um, Um, that one moment, please. I just have to select which I, I don't want to ask the question twice. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yes, what does the pure size of the wafers contribute to the LCOE reduction? We discussed at the beginning that the full package that you have the multi bus bar approach, for example, and the ribbon, the, the, the in, ribbon innovations. Which all with, which all contribute to the LCOE reduction. But if you would just say the size of the wafer, what does this matter? It's difficult to quantify it, probably. But can you comment on this? The commons are reason to go with multi bus bar around the ribbon. Yeah. No, the the point is you have if if you think on your cost comparison, we have included for this larger wafer size modules. You have also included other innovations like the more bus bars, the different mm -hmm. form of the rib ribbons, and all together they contribute to the cost advantage. But if we just no, want to discuss the cost advantage of larger wafers, how would you define this? Can you say and that? Actually, to go with the larger wafer modules, we have to put all these innovations into the technologies. Like I just said, if we go to the regular, like the, the very normal five bus bar, the resistance loss of the current will get higher. So it means when we are design the big wafer modules, we have to go with the multi bus bar. From our side, we are using the 10, 10 bus bars and uh, for the round ribbon, and it's also necessary. So, mm -hmm. so, so all the products that we are offering from the one added two modules, it will be always this kind of innovations on the multi bus bar and also with the, the uh, round ribbons. Yeah. So, last questions Are there PAN files for your modules? So, PAN files are those files which you can use if you, for example, want to calculate installations with PVSYS and so want to, uh, want to um, input the characteristics of the modules. Do you, do you have these PAN files and would you give that? To the people who want to use the models, uh, that is for sure. We can provide the pan file to the customer who want uh, to use the Seraphim's module as for series, and also our pan file are already certified by the third party. Okay, this is great. So now we come to the end. Uh, um, thank you th very much, Carl Lee, EMEA Sales Director of Seraphim Energy, and Charles Wang, Sales Director SMA Greater China. Thank you very, very much for this great explanation and this great webinar. We will inform you when the recording is online. All information on our webinars and download materials can also be found on our website, www.pv-magazine.com slash webinars. Um, the next webinars um, are tomorrow. We have another webinar concerning larger wafer modules in which we are diving more deeply in the reliability discussion. You find the registration also on the site, which I just mentioned, and which you can find on the right hand side here on the slide. Um, on Monday, next Monday, we evaluate the market for which the larger scale wafer modules are probably best suited. It's the PPA market in Europe, which is normally utility scale. Um, maybe we can get Go back one slide because I also want to want to um, suggest you more some 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 articles for further reading in the latest magazine edition. That's our quality edition, the April edition of PV Magazine. You can, for example, read about quality questions which may arise when using larger wafer modules. Webinar participants get an 10% discount. So remember the code which you see there: webinars 10 in order to when you want to purchase this edition we have also on the on the website we have um, ongoing reporting on topics which submit uh, for all the segments of course but also for this utility and the bigger installation segments um, 
for example, we had just recently an article about a photovoltaic greenhouse um, projects, um, which is quite big. And we have also reporting on the production and the manufacturing of, um, of larger wafer modules. So thank you very much to everybody. I hope you had a good webinar experience. And please don't forget to give us feedback about the webinar when you log out. You will a window having a window will pop up and please give us feedback on this. Thank you very, very much and have a nice day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you for everybody.